Back with me now, syndicated columnist Dr. Charles Krauthammer. Charles, you got a shot out in the news conference down there in Florida. It must be all your bets in Canada Casino. Well, having lost all that money at the casino, butting against uh, Trump, it's the least he could have done for me. It reminds <laughs> me of the time that Bill Clinton said something nice about me publicly, and you turned to me on special report for my reaction. And it was simply, you know, I'm toast, I'm done, my career's over. So I'm a little bit in that. Look, you know, Trippy was saying a little earlier that he found a little bit of structure in the Trump oration. Well, I beg to disagree. I'm, I don't think I've ever heard such a stream of disconnected ideas since I quit psychiatry 30 years ago. Uh, that was quite a performance, and it was very weird. I heard Rollins and Trippy giving advice, you got to tighten it up, you got to shorten it up, you have to have a point. The fact is, and this is the stunning thing about this election, without the tightening up, without the experts, without the prompter, he is where he is. There is simply something, that was a performance, that was live television, that was reality television, and that nobody can do. And that has its appeal. Now, I think people actually separate the, the, the performance part, what he did tonight, from what he says he's going to do as president, and he's pulled it off. Now, in the end, I think that's going to be really dangerous, because he often can go off the reservation, comparing himself to what was it, Abe Lincoln is number two, and how presidential he is. That's a little bit weird, but he's <laughs> been able to carry it off. I think people have a sense of humor about him, which is good, because otherwise they'd be terrified. Um, and that's what has been, been carrying him through. In the end, though, it'll be a one-on-one, -on -one and it'll get a little more serious. Well, listen, I mean, he is striking a chord, and he's getting big numbers in all these states. I want to ask you about Michigan, though, and Bernie Sanders clearly outperforming tonight, and it looks like it's going down to the wire. He might actually win this state. It's possible he loses it because there are some precincts that coming in from Detroit and around those areas that Hillary Clinton may pick up, as you heard with the, the Cowboys there. But... Uh, Listen, what does that mean on the Democratic side if Bernie Sanders is able to pick up Michigan? It means that he goes on a little bit longer, that we, he will go all the way to the convention. He'll end up with a few more delegates than he would have otherwise, but it will not matter. He cannot win this nomination one-on-one -on -one against Hillary. The only thing that stops her is what we have uh, talked about, the FBI primary. In the absence of that, she is going to win. Look, the, the African Americans are incredibly strong, most loyal element in the whole Democratic constellation, the whole universe. She, she won them by eight to one in Mississippi. He, act, he simply has no appeal there, very little appeal elsewhere outside of his main constituencies. Yes, he's doing well in Michigan. But in the end, he cannot win this thing. I think he will have a place of honor at the convention. He will make some kind of a deal. He's not going to be on the ticket. He's in his mid-70s. It's not going to work for him or for her. But other than that, other than become the founder of a movement that he will leave uh, behind, this, I know we're all excited about this. It is an interesting result, unexpected result. But in the end, it will not change the outcome. Okay, Charles, I don't know if you'll make it into the next news conference after uh, those comments, but we'll see. Well, I'm still recovering from that moment. All right, and Charles. I, let me just add one thing. Donald, it's not going to work. Nice try. <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you. You can just see Trump with his, you know. <laughs> Off the list. Charles is gone.